we just talked about proteins how proteins are made from the messenger rna they are translated not sometimes proteins are not made in the correct way the way they were supposed to be and that is due to a mutation in the dna mutations are changes in the genetic material dna which are heritable which are passed from one generation to the next there can be two different types of mutations one somatic mutations these occur in any body cell any cell of the body that is not ultimately going to form gametes the when a cell somatic cell suffers a mutation a change in dna all of its subsequent daughter cells will also have that mutation in when a mutation occurs in germline cells in cells that will ultimately form gametes these type of mutations are heritable they are transmitted from one generation to the next we are going to talk about specific type of mutation in detail in this module those are the point mutations these mutations are changes of single nucleotide base conversely there are also changes in in heredity material at much bigger scale in more gross form and those are the chromosomal mutations which which we talked about when we were studying genetics these could be changes in position or orientation of a segment of dna or deletion of a segment of dna we talked about some of these translocations deletions inversions etc so we we'll look at a couple of categories of point mutations the first one is silent mutation when this type of mutation happens this type of change in a single nucleotide of dna genetic material happens there is no change in the protein which is formed from ultimately formed from that segment of dna and that is due to redundancy of genetic code we looked at the genetic code and we saw that there were several codons which were specifying a specific amino acid so here's an example mutation at position number 12 in the dna example given here there is an a instead of c so a c gets changed somehow into an a so when there is transcription and ultimately translation the place where the leucine is supposed to be it is still the proline it has not changed the amino acid although there is a change in dna but resulting protein does not have a changed amino acid so there is no change in the protein function or it, this type of mutation will not generally be detectable since it's not altering the protein activity there are missense mutations there are base substitution mutations that change the, the genetic message for example when one nucleotide is switched with a different nucleotide the protein that is formed subsequently as a result of transcription and translation that protein now has a different amino acid than it was originally intended in the example here mutation at position number 14 in dna in there is an a instead of t so as a result rna is formed and when rna is translated we end up having a valine instead of aspartic acid so this would change the structure and function of the protein it can even a single nucleotide change can have dramatic drastic effects on the physiology of the cell and of course the the organism which is hosting that particular change so let's look at an example of this sickle cell anemia in which there is in messenger rna you which is coding for a glutamic acid at a particular position is changed to valine the result is this happens in the gene for beta globin and when this happens the ability of beta globin protein to respond to low oxygen concentration changes in normal beta globin protein will not have any problems if the oxygen concentration is low which can happen especially in muscle cells when we are uh, around muscle cells when we are exerting this beta globin 
protein accumulates, bundles up, forms these bundles under low oxygen con uh, conditions and results in formation of the shape of the cell changes. For example, here look at this one. This is sickle cell phenotype. It's a red blood cells. This is what happens when the cell has beta globin protein which is defective because of a mutation of a single nucleotide. And here is a normal red blood cell. So this is an example. Now let's talk about nonsense mutations. These base substitutions result in stop codon. To form, we know that we have seen the genetic code. There are three stop codons. So if a codon which was specifying, originally specifying a particular amino acid in a protein is changed due to single base change, is changed into a stop codon, a very, it could result in formation of a very much smaller protein and obviously smaller proteins may not be able to function, carry out the functions of the full normal protein. Here for example, mutation at position number 5 in DNA, there is a T instead of C and because of that we have a codon that this is a stop codon right here UAG and the first amino acid we know is always a methionine in the protein after that there is a stop codon so because of that this protein will never be made and that can also have severe effects than the other two types of mutations we have talked about the frame shift mutations codons is a is a set of three nucleotides, sequence of three nucleotides. And this is how it is being read by the ribosome, three nucleotides at the time. So if there's an addition or deletion of a single nucleotide, the whole reading frame is altered. And because of that, new codons basically appear. They change from the original version. There, there is a change. And wherever there is an insertion or deletion of a single nucleotide, all the amino acids that will be incorporated in the protein will be different from the ones which were being originally coded. So it can also have a very dramatic effect. The example here, mutation by insertion of T between bases 6 and 7. So there is a T nucleotide inserted between bases 6 and 7. So as we have seen the nucleotide codons, our reading frame is 3 nucleotides at a time. Here is a 3 nucleotide, here is a 3 nucleotide. So when we add an additional nucleotide, the whole sense of this message is altered. And all the amino acids which will be subsequently added during protein synthesis, now they will be different from the ones which were supposed to be in the wild type or the normal protein. So these are the frame shift, shift mutations. I would like to mention that generally we think of mutations as all mutations as being bad. That's not always the case. There are some mutations that can give advantages to the, uh, to the host organism. For example, I told you we talked about beta uh, sickle cell anemia in which beta globin gene has a, has a mutation, a point mutation resulting in a different type of cell and it behaves abnormally. It so happens that people who have this mutation are also relatively more resistant to malaria. So I'm sure you guessed it that this gene is more pr pr predominant in areas where there was prevalence of malaria. For example, people from Africa have this gene. Uh, this gene is more common in people from Africa, African nations. Also, these mutations result in diversity in the population. And they, these mutations are basically the fodder which fueled the evolution, the, all the diversity we see in living organisms is due to these mutations that gave rise to di different organisms and then the nature selected, we know the Darwin's theory, and that resulted in formation of new species. So um, mutations can alter the function of a protein. Ultimately, they can have dramatic effect, good or bad, on the organism that is carrying that mutation.